Hello everyone and welcome. First of all, Happy New Year to every one of you. I hope you had a great start with this new year. So in today's video, we are going to discuss about Android SSL pinning bypass. I know that Android remains one of the most important asset in security testing as well as bug bounty hunting. And a lot of security researchers come across a problem in which they are unable to test these Android applications. Why? Because they are unable to bypass SSL pinning using conventional tools or conventional techniques. Hence, in today's video, we are going to see how we can set up our environment and successfully bypass SSL pinning for mobile applications and successfully perform dynamic application testing. To do that, we are going to install a series of tools in our system and then we are going to take an example application to perform the successful SSL pinning bypass and capture the request in our burp proxy. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so before we jump into understanding and bypassing SSL pinning, we should understand what exactly is SSL pinning and why developers use this technique to prevent anyone to see the functionality of the application and what the client and the server are talking and the communication that is happening between them. So as you can see on the screen, on your left hand side is the client, which is your mobile phone, which contains the Android application. On the right hand side is the server, which is basically the application will communicate to. The client has a certificate, the server also have a certificate, which includes a public key and a private key. Once the client starts a communication, it sends a client hello, the server responds with the server hello, and the certificate has been exchanged at that point of time and the data has been verified. If the client certificate that has been passed is not trusted or is not pinned, the communication will not take place. Developers use this technique to prevent anyone from seeing what is the communication happening between the client and the server. If there is a third party certificate which has been installed into the client device which tries to perform man in the middle attack, the communication channel will not happen or it will not work. And this is what known as SSL pinning. Now, due to SSL pinning, a lot of applications wouldn't allow you to see in real time the traffic that is being sent from your device to its server. But to perform dynamic analysis and to identify what are the requests and the responses that have been sent between the client and the server while we are accessing the application, we need to bypass this pinning. Hence, let's get started and understand what are the steps that we are going to do to set up our environment. So first, we need to install Frida in our system. Then we need Frida code share scripts that we will use to bypass SSL pinning. We also require an Android device. The device could be a physical device if you have a phone or else you can also use Android Studio which provides you a virtual device. In my case, I'm going to install Android Studio and I'm going to use an emulator for ease. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to download Frida for my system. So I'm going to say Frida GitHub. This is the first link, which is the official repository of Frida. I'm going to click over here. From here, I'm going to download the compatible version for my Android emulator. So I'm going to search for Frida hyphen server. And you can see there are different variants of Frida server for Android. You can download the version compatible with your emulator or your device. Second thing that we require is the Frida code share scripts. These scripts are basically the SSL pinning bypass scripts that have been created over here. Also, these scripts have been contributed by the community, which can be found. So I'm going to click on Frida multiple unpinning. This is the JavaScript that we are going to use, which is going to help us perform SSL pinning bypass. Now from here, I'm going to download 
the compatible version for my emulator. So this is my Android Studio, which I have successfully installed. And this is the emulator which is running currently. Now, we also require one more thing, which is the ADB platform tools. So I'm going to download it from the official repository from Android. These tools are available for different operating systems like Windows, Mac and Linux. You can download it compatible for your system. I have downloaded the tools for Mac OS and you can see this is how it looks like. Now, the first command that I'm going to run is ADB and you can see I got some output which confirms the ADB command is successfully installed. Now I'm going to search ADB devices to confirm if ADB can detect the emulator that has been connected and it can successfully identify that as well. Great. Now next I'm going to say ADB shell. When I run this command, I'm able to successfully do a SSH in the emulator and you can see the file structure of the emulator as well. Now I'm going to open up a new tab quickly. We have downloaded the Frida server. So we need to copy the Frida server into the emulator right now. So I'm going to use ADB to push the file into the device. To do that, you need to type the command, which is ADB push Frida server. Whatever server file you have downloaded, you have to unzip it. And then you have to give the path where you want to copy this. So I'm going to provide the path as data local temp. And I'm also going to provide a new name to this file, which is frida-new-server and hit enter. You can see one file pushed successfully, which means this operation was successful. We can also verify that. Let's go quickly into the same directory and hit ls. And you can see this is the new file, which I have copied recently. Excellent. Now you need to give executable permissions to this file to run. Now, to do that, you need to say chmod plus x and the file name and execute the server file. That's excellent. So far, we have copied the Frida server and we have executed it. Keep in mind, you can keep that running in one tab continuously. Now, let's get back to our emulator. Here in the emulator, I'm going to quickly configure my emulator with burp proxy. Now I'm going to say HTTP colon slash slash burp to confirm if my device is connected to burp proxy and we can say it is not connected yet. So we need to configure the device with our burp suit. So my burp is already running. You need to go to proxy settings and click on specific address. This IP address is your machine IP address or your host IP address and you can choose a port number that you want the proxy to run on. Let's get back to the emulator. And now I'm going to go on the settings of my Android device. To do that, go in settings, click on network and internet, then click on internet. You would be able to see Wi-Fi. We need to change the settings for the Wi-Fi right now. So I'm going to click over here. Next, I need to edit this. So I'm going to click on this pen icon and I need to choose the proxy from automatic to manual, provide the same IP address as we have provided in the burp suit and provide the same port number. That's it. Now our device can successfully talk to burp suit. Let's verify that and it was successful. Let's download the certificate now in our device so that we can install the certificate in our device so that the communication can take place through our burp proxy. The certificate is successfully downloaded. Next, we need to install the certificate as well. To do that, you have to go in settings once again and search for certificate or CA certificate. So I'm going to go in the search and search for CA certificate as I've already done it. I'm going to click on CA certificate and I want to install anyway the certificate that I have downloaded right now. This is the path where I have downloaded the certificate. So I'm going to click on it. Once I click on it and hit select, it will automatically get installed in my device and you will successfully see a pop-up saying CA certificate installed. Excellent. Now our device is configured 
with burp suit proxy which means we can successfully capture all the requests from this device which we make via our browser not with the application so as you can see over here i have opened the zomato application and i'm unable to capture any request in my burp proxy let me quickly check my ip address and we can see my ip address is correct that we have configured with burp suit now i'm going to turn intercept on and i want to capture a request from the browser of my android device to successfully validate that burp configuration is correct so i'm going to open up google.com in my chrome browser and i'm going to search for a request so let's click on this and you can see a successful request was created and i was able to capture it this is exactly the same setup that you would do into your computer in your firefox browser and we are successfully able to do that as well now the most important part which comes over here now the most important part which comes over here is i do not want to capture the request from the browser i want to capture the request from the applications to do that we are going to now install tools that will help us successfully capture the request from the applications by doing ssl pinning bypass we have seen that by default we were unable to capture the request from the zomato application although we did the setup correctly because the application is pinned and will not allow any request to pass through the proxy to do that we are going to install frida so the command to do that is pip3 install frida frida tools and objection provide the password of your system and it will successfully install it for you for me it is already installed now i'm going to run frida to confirm frida has successfully installed and you can see over here frida is successfully installed that's great now i'm going to run this code which says frida hyphen u hyphen f the package name and the location of the script that we are going to use to perform ssl pinning bypass this is basically the script that you have to copy and paste into your system so let us quickly create a file let's call it as frida script.js and paste the entire code that we have got from the frida code share website let's clear the window and now we are going to run this command once again if you notice instead of com.example.com we require the package name of the application that we want frida to hook and perform ssl pinning bypass to identify the package names you can quickly go to the official website of google play and from here you can search for the application name and get the package name so the package name is com.application.zomato the other way of doing is you can install the application which is package names and search for the package name that is installed into your device so i'm going to click on zomato when you can see the package name here as well which is exactly the same so we are going to copy paste the package name over here and we are going to hit enter once we hit enter the frida will try to hook with the application and perform ssl pinning bypass you saw we got a error and we were unable to do ssl pinning bypass if you look carefully the error says that the certificate is not found into this path which is data local temp because this ssl pinning bypass frida.js script requires the certificate with this name in this path all right so we are going to copy the certificate into this path now and rerun the command once again the command that i'm going to use is adp push the certificate name to data local temp and cert dot der dot cert this is exactly the same name that the script wanted so we have copy pasted the certificate now we are going to rerun this command to check if we are able to successfully bypass the pinning or no so let's try to do this once more and now i'm going to run this once more exactly the same command with the package name the script name and hit enter let's wait for the script to successfully run and you can see 
we have successfully bypassed SSL pinning. Let's confirm that by capturing a request. So I'm going to click on settings and I'm going to perform an action right now. So let's update the first name. So I'm going to go in my burp proxy and I'm going to capture this request right now. So let me just say hello one and let's try to update this request and let's see if we can pass the request and see the request in burp. And you can see successfully the request is going to the API of Zomato and this is the first name that we have updated. You can see the response, we got 200, okay. It says success, profile updated successfully. Let's redo this once more through the request that we have sent in the repeater. So let's modify this hello one to hello two and let's validate that. Let's go and click on edit profile. Let's modify this to two and hit send. We are doing this to confirm if we are successfully able to make request via burp which confirms and changes in the application. So let's go back to settings and edit profile and we can see our change was successful. This confirms that we are able to perform pinning bypass on this application. Also, now we are able to see all the requests and the responses successfully that will enable us to perform dynamic application testing on this application successfully. So I hope all of you understood how to perform SSL pinning bypass with the setup using Frida, Android Studio Emulator, Frida Coach Script and ADB. If you like this video and you want to learn more in depth about Android pen testing and Android bug bounties, you can enroll for my upcoming three day bootcamp. If you want to get more details about the bootcamp and our courses, follow us on LinkedIn and Instagram also, you can visit our website, which is learn.hactify.in. Also, you can leave a comment in the comment box, which I will keep an eye on. Thank you so much and all the best.